Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, so far what we have is this row that we read from the courses. Now, I want to show you the reason why we are here is I want to show you that we can add extra data using those functions we added in the previous video. So if I refresh this right now, uh, we don't have any category information or any user information. So let's change that real quickly. So in those functions, what we're looking for is the user ID and category ID. So let's go to the course model and let's go to the functions that we know we can get some information. And that's the category and get user. So let's go down here. And, mm -hmm. So category, let's add a category. So what we would do is we're expecting rows, right? So I'm just going to make sure that uh, there's at least one row that has a column that I need. So if not empty, rows like this, and rows zero, the first item in those rows, uh, category ID like that, if that exists, then we have a potential to do something. If it doesn't, this will be skipped and it will just return everything as it is. But if it does exist, let's loop through the rows using a for each loop and that's rows. And through each item, we we get, I don't need that, I just need the row itself. Okay. Oh, I actually need the key, sorry about that, because I want to manipulate this guy. So I need to know what key we are on so I can manipulate this. So instead of value, I can still put row over there, like this. Okay, so get category, We've checked if a category ID exists. Let's loop through all the items and then uh, read from the database. Now, to read from the database, remember that we are inside a model right now. And the problem we face here is that we can create what is known as a recursive, um, a recursive issue here, where if we use this, like this, to run a query, Okay, let's say we create a query and we use this to run a query. Uh, this may be a problem because remember that inside query, or let's say we use the where clause, for example. Remember that we're already in the where clause here and the where clause is the one that's trying to run these functions. So we can create an infinite loop if we do this. Uh, you can try it if you want and see what I mean. So instead, what we need to do is create a new instance of the class that we want to use, one that is not currently running these guys. So in this one, I'm just going to say db is equal to new database. I just want to use the original database class like this to avoid any problems so that I'm sure I'm not running any of these where functions or so on. So, so what I would do is I'll get db and run a query. So db query, we just use the query function in this case. Okay, and just do query like that. So what is the query we want to run? So the query is going to be equal to uh, select or from categories, that's our categories table, where ID actually is equal to, let's put an ID there and say limit one. We just want one, that's all. So let's run that. And the result of this is a, a category. I'll just call it cat for now. Now remember this returns an array of objects. Even though there's only one result, it's going to still be an array of one object. So we need to put a zero when we are trying to access the result of this. But let's see here. If a result was returned, if not empty, cat, like this, uh, let's add that category item to this current row. So we're going to say rows, like this, uh, and then we need the key to know which one we are reading from currently among these rows. So that key comes from here, and then is equal to 
okay? So that rows key is the one that contains, it's like here where we're saying rows is this and then the key is zero. So it's an object like this one. So we're going through each single object. Here there's only one object because there's only one uh, item in the database, but there would be several. So depending on where we are on the key, we're grabbing this one object with all this. So from there, what we want is to get to, to add one more item here, which is going to be the category ID row. That's what we're going to call it. You can call it anything you want. It's just category row maybe, but I just want to match with the category ID and say there's a row instead. So we're going to say that key and then put a, a pointer like this because remember this is an object. This results in an object. So that's why we are doing this. And let's create another item in this object called category ID row, just so we know what it's about. Uh, if you want, you can just say category row, that still makes sense, is equal to this result that we got. And like I said, this result is always an array of objects, so we need to just get the very first item, which is inside zero. So we've effectively manipulated the rows variable, and then as we loop through all, we are looping through all the returned results. In this case, it's just one result because we only have one course. And then we add to that, and this is what we get. Now we need to tell it what ID this one is, right? And we have that ID in these rows called category ID. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I need to supply that in the query here. So I'll put a comma and add an array and say ID will be equal to, in this case, it will come from the current row. And this row is an object and we are looking for category ID from there like this. I hope it's not too confusing what's going on here. So what we are trying to do is go through each row and then check its category ID and then get an actual row from the table of that category. Okay, so if I now refresh, I should have this new item category row, which is another object which contains the actual name of the category you have and whether it's disabled and its actual ID. As you can see, this ID is matching that ID. So that's really what I've done here. So same thing we'll do with the user ID instead of having to uh, do all of this. Now we could have done this in a very different way where we've create, we could have created a query that actually gets uh, the user ID joins these tables. If you join the user ID table, join the category ID table, join this. Uh, I prefer to do it this way because, um, I don't know, it's much cleaner. It does more work. This one uh, tends to give the database more work to do, but it's much cleaner. Okay. Instead of having all these like category name disabled in the same row as this one, uh, like this, at least I know exactly where this data is coming from and which rows are available, which columns, etc., etc. Okay, and sometimes if you use the the join, uh, it may not return a result in case the category does not exist. In this case, we will still even if the category does not exist, maybe category four was deleted we we'll still have this row. It's just that category won't be available. This one won't be available because it does not exist. So we can put plans for that. Okay, so if everything we've done here will be repeatable in the um, user, get user, exactly the same. So let's just paste in there like this. Everything's same, All right? And the rows, rows, but instead of category ID, we are looking for user ID, right? So let's just change that user ID and we are selecting from users in this case the users table where ID is equal to ID and user ID there and uh, instead of category row we'll call this one user row and instead of cat maybe we call it boo, 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 boo. what can we call it just user I guess Alrighty then.
So let's see if that actually worked and let's refresh. And as you can see, now we have a user role. So we have more information just, just by reading from the, uh, the category, uh, the, the courses, it, it automatically gets the information we want, like the category, the user information, so that we can get anything from the user here. Now we can limit the amount of information we are getting here. Maybe we don't want the password to be seen of the user to be brought in the all this nonsense here maybe what we really need is just the first name and last name we can uh, limit it to that and maybe the row um, yeah so let's do that to limit information so instead here we can say select first name and then we say last name we don't have to get everything uh, row from users that way we have less information to deal with and there we go boom okay so we will have to do this for all these now the thing is we don't have a subcategories table or a levels or a price table yet so we don't need none of this but let's make use of the rest of these guys so save this let's go back to the admin section so instead of showing this let's delete this line okay so that we are back here boom Okay, so now at least instead of showing a number, we have some uh, more content to see. So what I'll do is I'll go back to courses view. Actually, let's add one more. Uh, let's go down here. So the title category, let's, um, let's put owner here. Yeah, owner. Uh, or instructor, let's say instructor. And that's after title. So I'm just going to duplicate. Mm -hmm. So here it goes to user ID. Let me make sure that everything is good. Okay, so instructor is one, category is four. Yes. So now let's replace this with actual information. So here in category, what I'll do is there's row and then there's another uh, object here that's supposed to exist. And this object is category row, okay? And then inside category row, there will be the actual category name like that. So that's what it is. And we will see that right here. And as you can see, there we go. Same with instructor, we can give its user row. And then in there, we have first name, like that. If you want the last name as well, just uh, duplicate this, copy that. And since this is, in, this is PHP, I can concatenate, put a space, and then add more, and then put last name here. Okay, like this. Boom, Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. Now the beauty of our um, our function we created, you see this this is this is not really good, you know. Uh, it's too much code. So what we can do instead is let me remove this. We don't have a name column, so just put name there like this, and of course it will tell me uh, undefined property name. Good, that's fine. But what we do is we go to the course model here where it's reading the the user it's reading first name last name row blah 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 now here where we are adding to we are putting the user row uh, we're adding this item to the user row. so what we can do is we can manipulate this before we add it to this so what i can do is do this and say this name so i'm adding a new column named name is equal to this first name then concatenate, put a space, and then this again, last name. Uh, that way it's already done here and I don't need it on the other. So now we have a property called name and it's much cleaner on the view side because we want to limit, to, to make the view side as simple as possible, not too much to do. Now, it's very possible that these things will not exist because let's say the user ID is not found. What happens? Yeah. Let me just do this uh, so I can show you what 
could happen. Let's go to course model. So let's say I'm doing a select here where ID is equal to ID. And then instead of, uh, I want to put a, an ID that I know does not exist in user. So I'll just put 10. 10 does not exist as a user ID. So let's just imagine the user was deleted for some reason. This is a problem we're going to have, okay? These properties do not exist, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so user row, name do not exist. Okay, so to fix this, we'll do a simple thing. Just come here and right about there, we just put two uh, question marks and put an empty and say unknown like that. So that if this does not exist, this will be echoed instead. So let's refresh and you see instructor unknown. Same thing with, um, what's this, uh, the category here. Let's do that so that if it does not exist, we will have unknown. So let's come back here and let's mess with that as well. Category ID, let's put 10 instead here. We know there is no such category at all and refresh and there we go. Instructor unknown, oh, there is actually <laughs> category 10. Let's put a hundred, right? Yeah, let's refresh and we see unknown. Okay, so conten contingency plans, yes. Let's undo this. Let's undo that as well. And things are back to normal. Goody, yay. Okay, so this is how we're going to do everything down here. Now we can add more courses and edit them. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in the next video.